Venus, the second planet from the Sun and our closest planetary neighbor, boasts some remarkable and unique characteristics that set it apart from other celestial bodies in our solar system. Its proximity to Earth sees it approach to within a distance of 23.5 million miles or 38 million kilometers, displaying intriguing orbital dynamics. However, its rotational behavior stands in stark contrast to this orbital swiftness. Venus spins at an exceptionally slow pace, taking a staggering 243 Earth days to complete just one revolution on its axis, and does it in a retrograde or clockwise rotation, setting it apart from all other planets in our solar system besides Uranus. This unique rotational pattern has sparked theories, suggesting that a historic collision might have altered Venus's original spin, setting it on this backward rotational trajectory. Within the Venusian thick, noxious and mostly carbon dioxide atmosphere, a diverse and complex nature of planetary dynamics unfolds. Indeed, our current understanding of Venus depicts a world of extreme conditions, characterized by searing heat and a forbidding landscape causing near insurmountable challenges for exploration. This contemporary view of Venus contrasts starkly with perceptions from the more distant past. Throughout the annals of time, Venus has held a mesmerizing allure for humanity. Ancient cultures held varied beliefs about Venus, viewing it not as an extreme and torrid world, but as a celestial entity intertwined with beauty and love. Its prominence as the brightest object in the night sky, next only to the moon, caused its transcendence from mere astronomical significance to weaving itself intricately into mythology, art, and the tapestry of human endeavors. Venus has been a constant in humanity's gaze toward the heavens. Five thousand years ago, the ancient Egyptians thought of Venus as two separate stars, one in the morning and another in the evening. Ancient Babylonian astronomers called it Ishtar, and meticulously chronicled Venus's movements over 3,600 years ago in the tablet of Amisaduka, an ancient artifact that detailed the risings, settings, and appearances of Venus relative to the Sun over a span of 21 years, revealing the Babylonians' keen astronomical acumen. During the Greek Empire, Venus was intertwined with their goddess of love, Aphrodite, reflecting the planet's symbolic significance. The Greek philosopher Pythagoras was one of the first to realize that Venus as an evening star was the same planet as Venus as a morning star. Later, the Romans, observing it as the most beautiful object in the sky, gave it the name Venus, and borrowing its significance from the Greeks, made it their own goddess of love. As time marched forward, notable astronomers contributed to Venus's celestial saga. Avicenna, in 1032, witnessed the rare transit of Venus crossing the face of the Sun. Centuries later, these so-called dark spots were identified as the transits of Venus and Mercury from the keen observations of Ibn Bajja and Qatb al-Din Shirazi. By the early 17th century, Galileo Galilei's groundbreaking observations of Venus, with the aid of his newly invented telescope, marked a pivotal moment in astronomy, challenging prevailing beliefs and paving the way for a new perspective on the solar system. Galileo's scrutiny of Venus uncovered previously unseen details, revealing a stunning revelation. Similar to the Moon, Venus displayed distinct phases, transitioning from crescent to full and back again. These observations had profound implications. The varying angles between the Sun, Venus and Earth could only be explained in a heliocentric model, which proposed that planets orbited the Sun, proffered by Nicolaus Copernicus in 1543. Galileo's meticulous documentation of Venus's changing phases, although not definitive proof, provided compelling evidence contradicting the prevailing Earth-centered universe. However, it wasn't until the 18th century that deeper insights into Venus's composition began to surface. Russian polymath 
Mikhail Lomonosov made a groundbreaking discovery in 1761 by detecting the existence of an atmosphere around Venus during another transit of the planet, as it aligned directly between Earth and the Sun. Building upon Lomonosov's work, German astronomer Johann Schröter in 1790 made significant observations detailing the scattering of sunlight in Venus's dense atmosphere. This phenomenon explained the appearance of Venus as a slender crescent during certain phases. The 20th century ushered in a new era of technological advancements that allowed for a more detailed exploration of Venus. Spectroscopy, radar technology, and ultraviolet observations opened fresh avenues of understanding. The first ultraviolet observations conducted in the 1920s offered valuable insights into the Venusian atmosphere, unveiling previously hidden characteristics. Subsequently, radar observations conducted in the 1960s and 1970s, including pioneering work at the Arecibo Observatory, provided a breakthrough in our comprehension of Venus's surface. These radar observations unveiled distinct features such as the towering Maxwell Monte Mountains, painting a clearer picture of the planet's topography. As technology advanced, the exploration of Venus intensified, with targeted space missions traveling to our shrouded neighbor for scientific study. The pioneering NASA mission, Mariner 2, was the first spacecraft to journey to Venus with a close flyby on December 14, 1962. The close-up view provided key insights into Venus's atmosphere, including its density, composition, and interactions with the solar wind. The spacecraft also recorded the surface temperature of Venus for the first time at a blistering 900 degrees Fahrenheit or 480 degrees Celsius. Following this milestone, the Soviet Union's Venera 4 spacecraft transmitted the first information from Venus's atmosphere in 1967, revealing the dominance of carbon dioxide. While NASA's Mariner 5 conducted in-depth observations of its magnetic fields and charged particles, the Soviet Union's Venera missions continued in the following years, including Venera 5 and 6 in 1969, both transmitting vital atmospheric data and advancing our knowledge of Venus's composition and conditions. In 1970, Venera 7 became the first mission to send data from the Venusian surface, and in 1972, Venera 8 landed and survived for a remarkable 63 minutes on the surface, providing crucial insights into the extreme conditions of the planet. The Soviet Union's Venus missions enjoyed more success with Venera 9 and 10 in 1975, both landing and capturing the first ever images of the planet's surface and transmitting crucial data about its topography. The United States continued its Mariner missions, six through nine in the late 1960s and early 1970s, ending the program with Mariner 10 and this beautiful ultraviolet image taken in 1974. NASA went back to Venus in 1978 with Pioneer Venus 1 and 2 missions, and again between 1990 and 1994 with the Magellan spacecraft, meticulously mapping the surface of Venus. More recently, other space agencies have sought out Venus for exploration with the European Space Agency's Venus Express mission between 2006 and 2014 and Japan's Akotsuki mission, which successfully entered orbit around Venus in 2015. The latest collaborative effort by these two space agencies, Bepi Colombo, a mission to investigate Mercury, also contributed to our understanding of Venus with a gravity assist flyby of the planet in August 2021. On August 10th of that year, the spacecraft flew to within 340 miles or 550 kilometers above the planet's surface and recorded the sound of the solar wind encountering Venus's atmosphere.
The comprehensive efforts of Earth-based observations and close-up missions spanning decades and employing diverse scientific instruments have significantly enhanced our understanding of Venus. However, our nearest neighbor doesn't give up its secrets easily, and there are still many unknowns, including its overall composition. For decades, the scientific community has been engaged in a debate over the state of Venus's core and whether it is solid or molten. This ongoing discourse has been fueled by various studies, each contributing unique perspectives and insights into the planet's internal dynamics. Venus, similar to Earth, likely has a core consisting of iron and nickel, with a radius of around 3,000 kilometers. However, due to the lack of direct observations and challenges in studying Venus's interior, determining its exact makeup remains a subject of ongoing research and contention. Some studies and models assume that Venus has a solid core, while others suggest the possibility that it is liquid or partially molten. The uncertainties stem from factors such as Venus's lack of a traditional magnetic field, which could imply that the convection in its core might not be as vigorous or that it is not entirely liquid. New missions, technological advancements and refined analytical techniques may provide further insights as our understanding of Venus's core is likely to evolve. Above the core, the mantle of Venus, estimated to be approximately 1,865 miles or 3,000 kilometers thick, plays a crucial role in shaping the planet's geological features, including its tectonic and volcanic structures visible on the surface. Within the mantle, heat transfer through solid-state convection plays a pivotal role in impacting temperature distribution, lithosphere thickness, crust fluctuations, and overall planetary dynamics. Over billions of years, Venus's changing mantle has directly influenced the planet's interior state and surface features, affecting other layers like the atmosphere. Understanding mantle behavior is crucial to comprehending Venus's geological history and its divergent evolution compared to Earth. The surface of Venus, lying beneath its thick atmosphere, exhibits a unique landscape unlike that of other planets characterized by the absence of visible craters, suggesting extensive volcanic activity that has erased early surface markings. In fact, a colossal resurfacing event is speculated to have occurred about 300 to 500 million years ago, likely halting plate tectonics and leading to the solidification of Venus's crust into a singular mass, a stagnant and thick lithosphere. But without plate tectonics like on Earth, how has the surface of Venus remained relatively smooth? And how has heat from within been able to reach the surface and escape? A recent study has uncovered a possibly ongoing mechanism that may be rejuvenating the surface while demystifying the heat flow process. It suggests that Venus experiences dynamic geological processes reshaping its surface through active volcanic activity. A team from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and the California Institute of Technology using data collected from the Magellan spacecraft in the 1990s analyzed 65 previously unexplored circular patches called coronae. Their conclusions show that these coronae, it turns out, are more than mere surface formations. They signify regions where the planet's lithosphere, its outer rocky layer, is unusually thin, only around seven miles thick. The close arrangement of ridges in these regions indicates a more flexible lithosphere, facilitating increased heat flow and geological activity and allowing volcanic rock to make its way to the surface, renewing the landscape. A wider view, looking from above, would show Venus's surface primarily consists of vast, gently undulating plains interspersed with large lowlands and two expansive highland regions which represent the rougher terrains of Venus, showcasing canyons and trenches. One of these areas is Aphrodite Terra to the south, comparable in size to Africa, and the other is Ishtar Terra in the north, roughly the size of Australia home to the Maxwell Monte range and Venus's tallest mountain, Scardi Mons, towering more than seven miles high. 
Numerous other mountains, volcanoes, and extensive lava flows cover significant portions of the Venusian surface. This would certainly result in an exceptionally challenging hike, complicated further by the searing temperatures and the oppressive atmospheric pressure, approximately 90 times higher than that at sea level on Earth. While ground winds generally move below a gentle 5 miles per hour, the surface is visibly concealed from above by multiple fast-moving cloud layers, some racing at almost 190 miles per hour, completing a full revolution of Venus in four days. In the upper part of the troposphere, the layer closest to the surface, dense clouds primarily composed of sulfuric acid droplets form at an altitude between 48 kilometers and approximately 65 kilometers. The absence of significant rainfall on Venus, in contrast to Earth's precipitation-driven cleansing process, allows the persistence of these sulfuric acid clouds. This peculiarity contributes to the planet's extreme greenhouse effect by trapping heat, resulting in Venus's notably high surface temperatures. Beyond that, the middle atmosphere, encompassing the stratosphere and mesosphere, extends from 65 to about 95 kilometers, where 70% of the solar energy received is absorbed, facilitating chemical reactions and causing the dark band seen in ultraviolet wavelengths. Higher than 95 kilometers, the upper atmosphere consists of the ionosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere, where there is direct interaction with the solar wind, creating an induced magnetic field around the planet. The variations in cloud markings, temperature distributions, composition, and density from the upper troposphere to the thermosphere showcase a dynamic nature characterized by rapidly rotating cloud patterns and the presence of giant polar vortices with intricate and variable morphologies. The planet's meteorology is not only active, but also displays a level of intricacy that continues to challenge our understanding. By far the most intriguing factor about the atmosphere of Venus, though, is the possibility of life's existence. The atmosphere of Venus, while harsh and inhospitable, might hide a potentially habitable layer within the troposphere between 48 and 60 kilometers above its surface. This region, known as the Cloud Deck, has temperatures suitable for life as we know it. And although the clouds here are made of concentrated sulfuric acid, not water, nucleic acid bases, the building blocks of life have been shown to be stable in that kind of environment. Billions of years ago, Venus might have boasted volcanic activity and oceans, which could have harbored microorganisms for nearly 3 billion years. However, around 3.5 billion years after their formation, these ancient oceans began to evaporate, creating a thick atmosphere rich in carbon dioxide and water vapor, causing a runaway greenhouse effect. Although these exceedingly harsh conditions could not continue to support most life forms, certain extremophiles like those found on Earth might have adapted to Venus's changing environment. Some scientists theorize that these resilient microorganisms could have found refuge within the thick atmosphere of Venus, surviving in aerial form. This idea is supported by intriguing observations from satellites orbiting the planet, revealing the aforementioned unexplained dark patches in certain cloud layers. Some propose that these patches could be linked to the presence of microorganisms absorbing solar energy, similar to algae patches in Earth's oceans or lakes. However, other studies have shown the dark patches may be from other processes, such as the presence of iron-enriched minerals in an acidic environment like sulfuric clouds. Even more supportive evidence for life above Venus is the discovery of the compound phosphine within the atmosphere, first reported in 2020. Phosphine, a potential biosignature, was detected by a team of scientists led by Professor Jane Greaves of Cardiff University in Wales using the James Clark Maxwell Telescope and the Atacama Large Millimeter Array. An MIT team, led by Clara Sousa Silva and Janusz Petkowski, quickly confirmed the results and also conducted an extensive analysis to explore any potential non-biological sources for the phosphine. 
But like on Earth, where phosphine only appears in the presence of living things, their conclusion was that there is no known non-biological process that could feasibly produce the detected levels in Venus's harsh environment. Follow-up observations reported in 2023 by Professor Greaves have shown the discovery of phosphine at even deeper levels than previously seen, and it is believed the compound is coming from lower parts of the Venusian atmosphere. The team's findings suggest that either the observed phosphine is indicative of life forms existing in the clouds of Venus, or that there might be some unexpected and unconventional physical or chemical process occurring on rocky planets that could produce phosphine. Future missions like the European Space Agency's Envision and NASA's Veritas are planned to study Venus's geology and surface, but given these latest findings, they may also address key questions such as the potential biological or abiotic sources of phosphine and the atmospheric processes that contribute to its presence. Venus, with its unique blend of challenges and opportunities, stands as a testament to the mysteries awaiting discovery in our celestial neighborhood. Whether unraveling the secrets of its interior composition developing cutting-edge technologies that can withstand the extreme surface conditions or probing the potential for habitability in its upper cloud layers. The exploration of Venus continues to captivate the imagination and drive scientific curiosity.